Hey folks, welcome to part two of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. First question is going to be, what is the primary purpose of using level of detail or otherwise known as LOD expressions in Tableau? Is it to increase data granularity, to enhance visualization speed, to bypass the normal aggregation level, or is it to secure data? So first of all, what is level of detail? How does it work? Let's get into it. So we have Tableau open up, uh, opened up over here, and I have a very simple visualization here. So I'm looking at subcategory and category and the corresponding sales. Now, because the most granular level here is subcategory, all of these sales are representative of uh, the subcategory, essentially. Now, let's say I wanted to uh, maybe have the sum of category, right? Some of this middle column over here, sum of sales by category, how can I do that? What's the most efficient way so that I could have, uh, you know, accessories, you know, the sum of sales for accessories side by side with the sum of sales of technology, which is a parent of accessories, if that makes sense. So for this, we often use something called a uh, level of detail calculations. And how does it look? Well, for example, if we want to fixate on the parent level category, um, and, we, and we want to get sum of sales, here's what we would do. We would type in fixed, um, and then simply what is the level of detail that you want to fixate on? In this case, it's going to be category, right? So at a category level, I want to fix the sum of sales, right? And it's that simple. Just going to close this off and maybe call this something a little bit obvious, such as category sales, okay? So now you effectively have an LOD expression, an LOD calculated field, and I can drag that um, over here into this box right here. And then you will have side by side the category sales and the you know actual sales. Um, and as you can see here, technology, 839,000 go down here, technology 830. What's happening here? It's fixate, it's fixating on that level of detail. So despite the fact that we're all the way down to the subcategory level, right? Even if I rip out category here, notice these numbers still stand because it's uh, representing the category sales because we're, we're able to use the level of detail expression. So going into these options by this demonstration, what can you tell? Does this increase data granularity. Not exactly. In fact, if anything, it kind of decreased uh, data granularity because we're now fixating on a higher level despite being much more granular into the process, if that makes sense. So the first option is not going to be correct. Second option to enhance visualization speed. You don't typically use a uh, level of detail to enhance visualization, so that's not the correct answer. Third option to bypass the normal aggregation level. Is that what we're doing here? Absolutely. What would you consider the normal aggregation level here? It would be subcategory, right? That is the most granular, granular level that you can see based on the pills that we have here. But despite that, we're able to bypass that because we're using a level of detail expression and fixating on a higher level in this, uh, in this hierarchy. So instead of subcategory, we are fixated on category for this one column. So it is in fact, bypassing the normal aggregation. Last option, is it to secure data? Again, this has nothing to do with permissions or security, anything to that effect. So the third option here is going to be the correct solution. By the way, if you do enjoy videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question, in Tableau, which shelf is used to control the starting point of a path in a visualization. So once again, to answer this, we are gonna go into Tableau and I actually have something set up here, a simple math, uh, a map I should say. Um, so we just have sum of sales by region, as you can see here, and it populated a map because it is using the you know geographical uh, coordinates, if you will. So we have a map like this, and by default, the mark is set to automatic, which we could change to whatever we like, right? Now, let's say we wanted to draw some lines, right? And right now, you'll notice you have color, you have size, label, detail, tooltip. If I click something like line, now I actually have a path because, well, what, what did that do? Now we have a path going from these different coordinates. And, you know, I can actually go crazy with it in the sense that if I wanted to have these between cities, I can drag city into the path 
and that's going to then establish the point of origin of these different paths. So you have like an origin, you have a destination. I'm not gonna get too much into the weeds, but as you can see here, you would use something like path if you wanted to really get into where a particular point would start and end when it comes to paths. Now, of these different options, it's not gonna be the pages shelf. We talked about that in the last video. You would use that up here if you wanted to kind of increment um, over a period of time uh, in a sense. So that's not going to be the correct solution. The path shelf, it does say path shelf. I, I don't know if necessarily you would call this a shelf. It's more so an option within the marks card or the marks shelf, but certainly path would be the correct option over here. Third option says uh, filters. This has nothing to do with filters. Uh, last option is tooltip. Again, we haven't even touched the tooltip here. So the correct option here will be the path shelf next question true or false tableau allows users to publish and share dashboards via tableau public without any data limit so if you want to publish a dashboard on tableau public remember that's the public facing website of tableau what this is saying is um, that there is no data limit true or false well, luckily, if you refer to the Tableau documentation, which I have over here, I'll also link this down below. This section here talks about what is the difference between Tableau Desktop Public Edition versus the Tableau Desktop Professional Edition. And one of the main differences is Tableau Public is in fact limited to 15 rows of data per workbook. So clearly there is a limitation uh, there. So as far as the question that, uh, Tableau Public, uh, you know, you can publish there without any data limit. That is false because there is, in fact, a data limit. Next question. Which Tableau capability is specifically designed for in-depth temporal data analysis? Is it forecasting, constant lines, clustering, or data blending? So what exactly is temporal data analysis? When you really get into, um, you know, periods over time or you know, monitoring trends over time. That's what temporal refers to. So think of it like, you know, uh, sales over a period of time, which we often use in examples. So to kind of demonstrate this um, in Tableau, let's open a new sheet. Let's do something like um, profit over time. So I'm gonna drag that here and want this to be a line chart so I could show it over time. And of these different analytical functions, right? You, know, you have something like constant line. That's the first option over here. What does that do? It's really just going to throw, you know, this vertical and horizontal line uh, wherever you wish. There's no, there's no analytics behind it. There's nothing crazy going on. That's all it is. So is that really helping you with, uh, you know, in-depth temporal data analysis? Not necessarily. But that's the second option over here. How about forecasting? What does that do? If I drag forecasting here, what is it going to do? Well, it's going to help me predict and kind of get some guidelines as far as where it sees the future trajectory going. So that's definitely something. And, you know, if you were to add different dimensions here, it would be that much more powerful. So that's something we could definitely say provide some in-depth temporal data analysis. How about clustering? So clustering also, let me undo what I did here. That's also an interesting function um, or an analytical model, but what it's really good at is helping you identify uh, marks that are statistically similar to other marks within the same group, right? That's what clustering is in a sense. So yes, it's powerful in that sense, but it doesn't really help with temporal data analysis, which is over a period of time. Where this really shines is just kind of comparing certain marks over the overall population and, and you know which groups are similar uh, versus different, that kind of thing. So that's not gonna be the correct solution. Final option, is it going to be data blending? Again, we talked about this in the last video. Data blending is more so just for uh, you know being able to connect one data source with another on a particular sheet when you're working with multiple data sources. It has nothing to do with in-depth data analysis in that regard. So forecasting here is going to be the correct solution. Next question, what type of join combines all records from two data sets and fills in nulls when there is no match? So this should be common sense because whether you work with data you know, in SQL or what have you, or any kind of BI platform across the board, this is usually this is gonna be the same answer. So really you need to really understand the concept of joins. 
uh, whether it's an inner joint, left joint, um, right joint, cross joint, full outer joint. But for purposes of this question, when you have two tables and you want to be able to bring everything, you know, all the rows from both tables, and in the event that you know you're joining on a particular field and that field doesn't seem to match between those two tables you want those rows to just populate with nulls correspondingly what do you use for that you would use a full outer join again that's if you want both tables to do that if it's one or the other then depending on which table came first you might want to use a left join as opposed to a right join doesn't really matter if you're you know willing to resequence it but you do want to use a full outer join if you want to bring in null values and not have to miss out on any rows between any of the two tables if there are no matches amongst the keys, as I mentioned. So over here, full outer join is going to be the correct solution. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Examiner Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now there are a limited number of spots available so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know practice makes perfect. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. As always be sure to like the video if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and of course as always I will see you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Yeah.